Hi, this is Craig from GMC4x4.com, the site for Chevy and GMC truck enthusiasts. As part of our upgrade video series, what I'm going to show you guys how to do today is to install these real lift torsion bar relocators. The purpose of these relocators is specific for uh, IFS lifted trucks that still retain their torsion bar suspension. And what they do is this goes into your lower control arm and actually raise, raises your torsion bar uh, so it goes back inside the frame. This will dramatically improve your ground clearance and specifically your breakover angle. So it's great for anyone who uh, is big into wheeling their trucks. Um, one reason why I went for Real Lift is they've been around for over 10 years. They have uh, incredible, the product, I mean this is a seriously heavy duty quality product. Um, they tout on their website how they've never had a return due to a manufacturer defect uh, for any of these relocators that came out of their shop. So an impressive product, um, they're well respected throughout the uh, Chevy and GMC truck environment. So I figured it was time to put it on our truck. Um, something that's unique about putting it on a four-door Tahoe is actually the torsion bar cross member. This is what comes on a four-door Tahoe. It's unique because of this mounting system right here. If you look at the pickup and suburban, they have this strap side where the torsion bar cross member bolts directly to the frame itself. So if you've got a four-door Tahoe, you're going to need one of these. Otherwise, if you've got a pickup or suburban, you don't need to modify this at all. Just use what you got. So as uh, part of our video today, I'm going to show you how to install these and, uh, and show you some before and after photos just so you can see uh, what a benefit that these uh, will provide. So it's actually a pretty straightforward install. You really don't need too many tools to get this going. You're going to need, uh, if you don't have a, uh, an air gun, you know, a large uh, half inch socket wrench will do. You're going to need a drill, and this is again just for the four door Tahoe because you're actually going to have to drill new holes in the frame. You're going to need a tool for unloading those torsion bars. I personally, this is the setup I use, um, it's a little bit safer than C clamps. You're going to need uh, grease. I use uh, Amsoil, uh, the water resistant synthetic stuff. This is just to put on the end of your torsion bars so they slide in nicely. Uh, Loctite, this is not a, uh, a part that you're going to be taking on and off regularly, so feel free to use blue or red. And uh, a mallet. So, not too many parts. Uh, it's definitely time consuming, so you can do it safely. Uh, but this should be a, a pretty uh, straightforward job. Um, your next step is uh, once your truck is ready, You're going to have to lift it, as you can see here. That's to take uh, all of the stress off of your uh, your torsion bars for right now, and it'll certainly help with um, with unloading them. So uh, you're going to be under truck for a few hours. So in addition to any hydraulic screw jacks that you use, also put underneath uh, some nice uh, jack stands. That way, you know, God forbid the uh, the truck shifts or something fails, you've got your jack stands uh, doubled up, so you don't have to worry about the truck falling down on you. Um, as, uh, as next step to really get this going, your first step should be unloading your torsion bar. So uh, I'm going to start setting up the tool now. I'll show you how to set the tool up and we'll take it from there. So, All right, so now it's time to uh, unload our torsion bar. So what I've done here is I've set up our tool um, and you want this black bar to sit at the bottom of your torsion bar cross member. So you push this up and then you tighten these nuts as, uh, as much as you can. And um, this big bolt here you want to make sure is inside that dimple on your key. So that's sitting in actually a dimple up there. Um, this is your torsion bar adjustment bolt right here. And um, give this a turn, you know, give us a quarter turn, this big bolt, quarter turn. That'll take the pressure off of essentially that bolt which runs through this block. Then you want to counterclockwise, take this whole adjustment bolt out. And um, once you complete that, you'll notice that this bar is nice and loose and then you pull it out and uh, that will allow the key to actually become unloaded. So after you've done that, you've taken the bar out, you know, you've taken that uh, adjustment bolt out, now you can move on to this. Now, instead of going clockwise, you're gonna go counterclockwise. Um, and as you bring counterclockwise, it's gonna take all the pressure off this torsion bar and the, uh, the key is gonna come out. So um, repeat that on the uh, driver's side, pretty straightforward. 
and uh, you'll be good to go. So that's how you unload the torsion bars on uh, on this truck. These are my torsion bars. They're a custom set, so you may or may not have to do this with yours, but I made sure when I took mine off that I stayed passenger side, driver side. I have splined ends, so I cleaned them off with a wire wheel. I did the same here. I cleaned the inside of the key. Um, I found actually there was a bit of rust on these, so this is another spot where I'm going to change out the synthetic grease I used to use for uh, M'soil's uh, waterproof stuff. So I think that'll help with the rust and certainly help these splines uh, to survive uh, a bit longer. So the next step, and this is uh, one of the tougher parts for the four-door Tahoe, is here's your, you know, here's your transfer case just to kind of give you an idea where I'm stand, uh, laying down. And this is a huge cross member right before the gas tank. This whole thing has to come out to complete this install. You've got rivet nuts right here, one down here, you got one up there on the top of the C channel, and then uh, you know one and one over there as well. So you're going to need to take this piece out. Um, I recommend uh, step into it with a number of bits. Use cutting oil so you don't damage your bits. I used uh, five bits to step into this. <coughs> oh, excuse me to get this off. Um, and I'm assuming if you're putting these relocators in, you actually do four-wheel a bit. Um, if Chevy put this here, I highly recommend you put it back. So once I get this off and I get my hull and I test fit everything, I'm going to see if there's a way that I can bolt this back in. If not, I'm going to have some brackets made because for me, it's important, and it should be for you guys too, to not twist your frame and, you know, and not damage this truck when you wheel it. So find a way to put this back in. If I can figure it out uh, today, I'll show you guys how I did it on video. So... Um, now I'm just going to finish taking out all these rivets, removing the cross member, and then I'm going to test fit everything. So stay so tuned, guys. So the directions spell this out uh, really well. Um, take your, uh, your relocator, and we've already test fit this so we know it works. Um, take your relocator, slide the torsion bar through it first, and then go to... control arm. Um, the reason uh, why I'm using that waterproof grease is it'll help prevent rust on, uh, on the relocator, on the uh, control arm mount. Uh, also put grease here. It'll help everything slide in and out and also protect it from rust. And then also we're going to do it on our spline ends down there and on the key. So put that grease everywhere. Um, it'll help for assembly. So you can see now the new uh, cross member is in. I haven't yet drilled it. Um, once I mock everything up again, we're going to tap the holes here and, uh, and there, and of course, uh, measure twice, drill once. We want to make sure this cross member is, uh, is straight and even all the way so across. So this is as far as I could get the relocator in. The reason why is there's a bolt on the other side that holds in the front differential subframe and ties it into the rest of your truck frame that essentially stops the relocating from going in uh, any farther. But uh, I shaved that bolt down as far as I could. And uh, this is about as far as I can get the relocator in. And uh, this is as far, you see there's a little bit of the torsion bar hanging out, but uh, it's not too bad. There's a good uh, chunk sitting inside the relocator, so I'm not worried about it damaged, being damaged. So after that's done, <laughs> your next step is actually to drill your frame. So from here, you want to make sure that your relocators are set, your torsion bars are set, you're happy with the positioning. Um, you know, take, me take measurements from the front of your truck to the back and across just to make sure that everything is straight. Because once you drill, um, you know, you should be done by then, by the point that you're drilling, meaning that everything is set in place. So start by drilling your first hole with, um, whoop, you know, start by drilling your first hole with uh, a small drill bit. And then from there, you can move how the hole um, goes, you know, left, right, up and down, um, based on where your bracket is sitting on the other side. So start with your small bits, uh, you know, make your pilot hole, and make sure that you get this hole spot on. You don't want it too big, you don't want the bolt wiggling around in there, which will then, of course, you know, move the bracket back and forth. So this is my, this is my first hole. Um, fortunately, it was, you know, it worked out pretty well. And from there, what I would do is bolt the bracket in from the other side, or clamp it in, um, upside down. So essentially you're going to start, put it on that hole, turn it up like this, clamp it down, and that will make sure that the middle hole that goes to the bushing is spot on and that your uh, last hole as well is spot on. So this will make sure that um, you know, your holes are in the right place and you don't have to uh, spend all this time drilling other pilot holes. Um, you know, once you're done with that, then of course 
you know, move to your second side, which will be a little harder because you won't actually have a, you know, bracket to play with at this But uh, especially because this side, it's actually really hard to get the bracket off once it's in. So make sure your bracket and your bushing are on before you put this in because those fuel lines are pretty much always in the way. Um, and then move to that side. Also, one thing I noticed is once I had the bracket in, this corner was actually hitting the fuel line. So what I did on the bracket that's already installed is I actually just shaved this whole side down right here. Don't take too much off because you don't actually want to damage the, uh, the bracket itself. But take enough off so your fuel line doesn't hit. So um, what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to keep drilling uh, my two hole, two remaining holes here, bolt in that bracket. I'm going to do my three holes over there. And uh, then uh, really next time we come to the video, I'm going to be uh, loading the torsion bar. So stay tuned. Our torsion bar unloading tool is set up, ready to go. As you can see, it's right on that, uh, that point right there. Um, whenever you reuse OEM bolts, always clean them up with a wire brush. And um, you know before you install everything, make sure it threads fully through this. And uh, we're essentially going to crank this uh, clockwise. Once the key is up to the point that we can slide this in, it's going to go uh, back into its OEM location right there. We're going to install this adjuster bolt, uh, then take tension off the uh, unloader and take that out. So we're going to replicate that on uh, the other side, and then it will finally be time to uh, take the truck off the lift and, uh, and see how well we did. So just a quick addition to the video. Unfortunately, the uh, torsion bar unloading tool that I showed you earlier will not work on the driver's side. Essentially the uh, the gas tank is right there so uh, I had to switch to the C-clamp. Um, you can actually rent these for free from Advanced Auto. They're inside the uh, ball joint kit. So um, we're just going to use this tool, same as the other, load the T-bars up and uh, on the next uh, portion of the video I'll show you how the truck uh, sits. Alright so the relocators are in. Uh, I've also fabricated the uh, spacers, cut them down to fit. And uh, I've got about a hundred miles on these uh, on the relocator so far. I've already had the truck uh, aligned, and uh, so far no difference in ride quality, which is what I expected. Uh, everything uh, really impressed with these relocators so far, from the build, the geometry, the overall design. Uh, it's really a uh, really great setup that they put into this. Um, one of the items uh, I just wanted to point out: this uh, transmission cross member. You can see. You know, the width between the torsion bar and the cross member is about the width of my finger. Um, this truck has a, about a five, five and a half inch drop with a rough country lift. If you were going to do a six to eight inch drop, uh, this cross member is definitely going to get in your way because the torsion bar is going to hit it. So um, really think about it um, if you've got a six to eight inch lift because you're going to have to seriously modify this setup to make it work. Um, otherwise, the other item that I noticed so now that you've got your new cross member in, your fuel filter sits right about here. So your fuel lines are running down into here. I notice that the fuel line actually is touching the new mount for this. So um, before you go and install this whole setup, make sure you either put a mild bend in your fuel line um, or you find a way to insulate the steel mount against the steel line because the vibration could eventually lead to premature failure on your fuel line. So take that into account before you install these and it'll save you uh, quite a bit of time. So uh, overall, very happy with this product. Uh, I hope you guys liked the install video. If you have any questions or would like to see more of our how-to videos for the GMC and Chevy platform, check us out at www.gmc4x4.com and uh, hope to uh, see you guys on the trail.